going to be actually mounting one of our cameras. And we've already talked a little bit about placement of the cameras, but remember you want to place them so that some of the cameras will interlock with some of the other uh, fields of view from the other cameras. So I've done a few things here to kind of speed this up for just demonstration purposes. I've already drilled a hole to run our cables through. And I've already kind of pre-drilled some of the holes, but there's a couple things I just wanted to note that you might run across. Some of these have different angle mountings, and there's different types of cameras with different mounts that we've, we've also discussed. But make sure that you're going to place this up here in such a manner that will give you the, the most flexibility to mount this. So one thing they're going to do to try to make this a little bit easier is you can kind of unscrew the ring here and pull this out of the way to make it easier for mounting. And I'm going to make a note here. Some of these come with some pretty cheap screws and they'll strip out pretty easily. So one thing that you can do, one thing I like to do is to take some of these kind of bugle head screws like this. They're common for drywall applications and decks and things like that. And they, they tend to hold up a little bit better. And one of these little drill bits kind of help you to make sure that you're not going to strip out the head as well. So let's go ahead and mount this. And now you'll go back and make sure you have an angle the right direction to give you the most flexibility here. And you'll tighten this ring. And just as a note, this particular camera comes with a little adjustable shield here at the top. And this is important because in cer certain directions, when the sun comes up in the morning or goes down in the evening, you might have direct sunlight on the camera and it might kind of fade out your picture. So you want to make sure that you use this. And it's also good if you don't have an overhang so you can kind of shield the camera. This particular camera, as you can also see, has the infrared illumination. So this also helps with, with night view and the power cord. If you're using the network style or CAT5 connections, you would just have one connection to, to run here and then crimp your ends on. So just for demonstration purposes, we've already drilled this and we would just push these up into the attic and we would take the other side of our connector and connect these in here and our power style connector here as well. And then the other side, would you would have the exact same connectors and you would place these on the back of the unit. And we'll demonstrate that here in a few section we're going to be looking at the XBIM digital video recorder. I'm going to flip this around and show on the back of it. As we can see here on the back there are several connectors and they're all numbered. Uh, we're going to start off with a one here which is going to be the, the first camera and we have these BNC style connectors the same that we used on the back of our video camera. They just plug and twist to make sure they have a secure connection. The other connector here is the power and it's indicated by the red connector. And we have these little adapters. We're going to take one of these and plug into each one of the cameras are going to plug in. The other side will connect to one of these small power supplies. This powers up each of the cameras individually. This will plug into a regular wall outlet. I like to plug them into a surge suppressor or a power splitter. The next connector, we're not going to demonstrate all of these, but remember the other side of our camera? This is where we had the other side of the BNC connector as well as the other power connector. We didn't show this in detail outside, so I wanted to show this here. Here you'll also see there's audio in and out in case you want to record audio for your cameras. You have a network connection. You have two USB ports, one of which it comes with a supplied mouse so you can change your settings. There is another power connector. There's a supplied power adapter. It's similar. It's a little larger in, in size though. That plugs in here. And there's also a VGA as well as an HDMI connector to connect to whichever type of monitor or TV that you would like to connect it to. Okay, we've got a little bit of a demonstration set up here. We've since taken our uh, digital video recorder and it's set up here with just a regular monitor hooked up with a video cable. We have one of our cameras hooked up through the BNC connector here in our power supply. And you can see that they're, na they're numbered according to which, one, which position they're plugged in here. And you can actually change these if you want to label it 
side of house, east side, west side, or front porch, whatever that happens to be. So we have one of the cameras aimed outside at some of the decorations out there and the front porch light is on. So you can see it's kind of in color here. So next we're going to turn off the lights. And it'll take just a second here as we turn off the rest of them off. And then the, the night vision actually kicks in. The little IR illuminators kick in. It kind of shows up kind of black and white, but that's what it does here. It shows up so even if there's no light on outside whatsoever, it still illuminates what you see outside. 